hello viewers well it's been a few weeks since my last blog i thought it's time for a, a new blog and with grid uh, reviews coming out today plus moto gp last week i thought it was time for a, a few words on both games firstly grid uh, the review will be up uh, on the site today uh, meeting the embargo uh, james allen who's reviewed the game he didn't have grid 2 uh, wasn't too into that didn't end up getting it after the reviews but uh, he played grid 1 and he's been playing grid auto sport and you'll see his review score on the site uh, i'm not reviewing grid auto sport i'm i've been playing it and just really looking for what I can get out of it. I've been working through the one-player game, mainly on the open wheel class. I've been testing different cars on different circuits, just seeing how the handling's changed. That's been the core cool thing. Visuals, I think, personally, I, I think it's very nice on the PC. Uh, the visuals are greatly improved uh, upon last year. It's quite interesting how it looks. I mean, Grid 2 had refined visuals that lacked character in some way. It's difficult to explain, but they just lacked a certain character to them. And they've got that back in Grid Autosport. In, in a way, Grid Autosport really is what Grid 2 should have been. And uh, it's, visually, certainly, it's very nice. Paris, in particular, really, really stands out how different it looks. Handling-wise, the cars are much more stable this time, but that doesn't apply to all cars. I mean, the demo we played a few weeks ago playing the Formula C, uh, was it was good fun, uh, but then when you play Formula A uh, in the Indy car, I haven't enjoyed it so much. I still find it it doesn't suit the handling uh, as well. Also, one big issue with the Indy car I found is the camera placement. Uh, the field of view for me, in terms of the Formula C car, is just right on the view I've got. Whereas the camera placement on the Indy car seems to be too high. It's almost like a different person set up the Indy car to the other cars. The other problem the game features for me is obviously the cockpits are low res, they are a bit blurry, it's it's uh, compromised if you like, okay I can see that, it kind of works so that's fine, it does work in some cars better than others, the Formula C for example works fine for me because I have a wheel, perfect, but uh, that's something which uh, it's, it's going to depend, it's a compromise, we, we, we'll leave it at that. The other issue I have is bumper cam, again, unplayably low. I don't know why Codemasters just can't seem to put a bumper cam at the right level. I've been saying this for years. If you watch my F1 2011 videos, the same thing. They put a bumper cam on the floor, and the bumper cam should be at driver height. That's where it should be. And in fact, in some games, like PGR3 years ago, they put in two bumper cams, one that was on the floor for those people that absolutely want that, and one, and one at a more playable height. Now, I'm somebody who quite enjoys racing from a bumper cam. I find there's a certain intensity of being right at the front like that, and I can't use it. So it's an unplayable camera for me in the game. And that's extra disappointing when either you don't have a cockpit view or you have a compromised cockpit view. I think it's something which Codemasters really need to look at because it, it takes something away from their games. It takes a gameplay option away. That impacts heavily on the experience. So that's a bit of a shame. It's nice to see the old tracks coming back from the first grid um, but I wanted to test some different cars and different circuits so I tested the Lola a completely inappropriate car on San Francisco and you can see here uh, unfortunately the car it just doesn't take the circuit very well once it hits the bumps uh, the car just flips out now if you slow down a lot you can reduce the amount the car bounces around the air but uh, some cars don't need to slow down some do so that's a little bug there I think Codemasters need to look at but it's a great circuit, great to have it back. Uh, they've really, really done well designing the city circuits. You know, in this and in, uh, you know, it, it, well, I say you've got Paris, you've got Barcelona. You know, it's, it's really nice to see how they've, they've found these city centres and designed really great circuits around them. There, there are roads in London I remember looking at years ago. I thought I'd love to race around there. And then they put them in PGR. I'm glad they've done that with these circuits. Visually, again, nice enhancements. Paris looks great. Um, there's big differences now to the handling uh, in terms of the scale of the city. It seems a bit narrower. Everything seems a bit bigger. Uh, but there's a lot more detail in terms of sort of cobblestones and stuff. Big handling changes there. So let's talk about the handling. Well, it varies very much car to car. Some cars are... Uh, uh, turn in they've got lots of grip they're quite heavy some cars they have that sort of sweeping motion to them that's fine it's an arcade game it's supposed to have that i haven't got a problem with that as long as it's consistent um 
some cars it takes a bit of getting used to. The uh, Lola, for example, around Spa, uh, you, 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 first you're kind of oversteering to compensate for that kind of understeering nature of it. But it feels different to Grid 2. This one feels a lot more intuitive than Grid 2. Grid 2, for example, had some nice elements. Some cars handled okay, were good fun. Some cars were terrible. Uh, it was a real mix of a, a, a concept that didn't execute properly. The other issue was the difference between the wheel and the pad. The wheel was 10 times more difficult to use than the pad. I could go with the pad, I could full lock left and right in a muscle car, no problem, power slide every corner, win every race, jump on a wheel, and I'm literally on the limit of my ability just trying to keep the car on the road when you're going flat out. It's, it's just no comparison. I haven't played with a pad on Grid Auto Sport, but I can say so far it's been very intuitive with a wheel and a lot of fun. Though you do need a lot of concentration. You know, Formula C, uh, the wheels can spin up very easily. I do have a few issues with Formula C in terms of the lack of downforce on high-speed corners. So when you turn into a corner that's normally flat, so let's say turns two and three on Abu Dhabi, um, the car will spin out. It will just begin to come out. You won't save it unless you back out the power and it will spin off completely. That's a bit frustrating. So you, you have to change your driving style to suit, suit the game. And that's fair enough, but it does it is quite tricky at first. It's a, a little bit frustrating and then it all comes together. But overall, have I enjoyed it? I've had great fun racing these cars on these circuits. I think the graphics are fab. Um, there are a few areas where they stutter a bit. Going through the hotel, Yas Marina Hotel, graphics really struggle through there for me. We go from 50 frames per second down to down to whatever, 20, 10 frames per second, just when we go past that section. Um, but visuals have taken a big step forward. You know, I normally get anything between 90 and 120 frames at max on uh, Codemasters games. This one's more like 50 frames, 40 to 50, you know, around that area. So you can see they've, they've loaded a lot more detail in there and it's nice to show as well. So overall, I've really enjoyed my time on it. Uh, you can get the full review from James Allen on the website and the link is below this video. Do check that out and have a read. But I think if you liked Grid 1 and you know what the handling's all about, then you won't have anything to complain about, certainly on Grid 2. It's a very similar style uh, and it's great to see some of those old, old courses returning. We'll have a few more videos on the channel. Do let me know what cars and circuits you'd like to see. So that's Grid Autosport. And I'll have more opinion on that, no doubt, as, I, as I've played it more in the coming days and weeks. Uh, the other game released recently has been MotoGP. Now, I had my early copy, uh, which was sent to me a few weeks ago, which was very incomplete. Uh, there's still one more video to come up from that. Um, and I've just got my final copy, which, uh, which, I'll, which is the retail one, which I'll be testing out in the next few days as well. Uh, I'm not aware of what's happening with the down DLC for day one. Uh, apparently it hasn't turned up for the PS4. I don't know what's happening with that. Had no word from Milestone, but I will look into it. But um, there will be more MotoGP content to come on the channel as well, on the PC version. So uh, look forward to that. And again, cars and bike combinations. I, I, I'll, say, I'll see what I can do on it because it does take time to learn and get into it. I can pick up and play on the uh, car games in a way better than the bike games there's a different sort of mindset to it. it takes a bit of time to sort of dial yourself into the circuit you have to do lots and lots of laps so I'll certainly do a few of the tracks I know and uh, test some of those different bikes out and I do want to show the 34 bikes or whatever in a race I think that'll be interesting to see on the PC version as well so MotoGP uh, again keep giving us your, your feedback on it what you think of it so far you know this is all important for the developers uh, in, you know, in, in, in what they're, they're going to achieve in the future and improve upon. Uh, and hopefully you can see the improvements every year. It's tough for these developers. You know, I see how people compare games that they make compared to Forza Motorsport and stuff like that. And there's hugely different budgets are available. You know, it's a bit like the difference between, you know, uh, a Red Bull and a, a Marussia. You know, the, the difference is huge. Uh, even in the games industry between these different companies and different teams in terms of technology that they have and how much they can build on every year, you know. So every year it's a step change and I'm glad to see that they're, they're making good progress there. But you'll never please everyone. And that's one of the things about the games industry. 
Um, and that's it really for this uh, little blog. We've had some E3. We were a bit disappointed by E3. We, we had somebody who was going to send us footage of all the new games. They let us down. And so all we got was a little clip of Drive Club. And that was the end of it, unfortunately. It would help if the games publishers gave us a bit more access. Give us the access. You know, if you give us the access, we can film it. If you don't, we can't. And that's, that's it one of these days uh, when it comes to covering these racing games we really do need a bit of support from the games publishers as well we're not as big as ign we're not as big as GameSpot, but uh, we do do a good job in covering the racing content and i like to think we do anyway you know and uh, we certainly like to deliver as much as we can to you the viewer as possible and i appreciate your support as viewers watching to this point in the video you're one of the 15 percent uh, because at the end of the day we wouldn't be here without you the viewers supporting us so that's it on all the racing stuff at the moment. I'm trying to keep up with these videos output as quick as I can. So grid videos on the way, MotoGP videos. Uh, then we're going to have a bit more Project Cars in the coming days. And I'll be back on iRacing. I've really got to start grinding through iRacing as well, getting into that. So you will have a period where we start properly getting into iRacing. It's got to be done. I keep putting a toe in the water. I will have to get into it. It does take time. That's the only thing about it at the moment. It's tricky. But time will be put into iRacing. So... That's it from me for now on this video, and as ever, there'll be more from me very soon.